What's up, VC? Stavros, Spinning Greek, uh, back from the den. Lots of Wrecker Sword Day videos, man. Uh, enjoying most of them. <laughs> some people hate it. Some people love it. I'm right in between. As a concept, it's a great idea. It's executed fairly poorly and getting worse. 10 year anniversary. You think they learn from mistakes, but they're just exacerbating them. But look, independent record stores that do this the right way can make money. But from my understanding, if you're an independent record store and you're not price gouging, you're not making a lot of money off of RSD because you got to lay out so much money to get the stock. And if it goes unsold, you can't return them. So, uh, record store day pickups. I went to Shady Dog Records in Bryn Mawr, PA. Uh, Mike, Dave, and George. George Wildheart has a channel. I'm sure you guys have seen him. Um, it is a small store. They've got way more stock than a store of their size can handle. And they got great stuff. I mean, look, it's my go-to record store. I go there once a week now. Even if I don't buy anything, I just talk to them for an hour and shoot the shit about music and sports and what have you. I think they're amazing. They're great guys. And honestly, I didn't really care about Record Store Day this year. I perused the list briefly. I knew one thing I really wanted, which they didn't get, but that's all right. I still went to support them. And I ended up spending a good chunk of change on stuff. Now, I used to make lists and sample music, and I want this and I want that. Now I'm just like, I'll go when I go, whether it's the morning or the afternoon, it doesn't matter. And what's there is there, and I'll pick it up and I'll be happy. And if it's not there, it's okay. Uh, oh, we're listening to uh, The Soul of Greece, 101 Strings. Uh, why? I don't know. Uh, Helmet Diggy sent me this as VCLT and I had not spun it and I'm like, fuck it, let's spin it and put it on the background during record store day. It's appropriate. No, it's not, but it's okay. Um, all right. What I got for record store day. Uh, oh, and by the way, these guys price their stuff a little bit above list. I mean, they're not making a killing on this. They want people to get in the store. They had coffee. They had donuts outside. I showed up, they opened at 9.30. I showed up at 9 o'clock, I was 8th in line. You know, I hope people, like, start going more. Just go after me. Because um, the other huge record stores, which I will talk about, are assholes. Uh, Alright, so first up, I got this War on Drugs 12-inch single early recording of um, Thinking of a Place. I think it's going to be on their next album, I think. I don't know. Um, it sounds fantastic. It sounds great. And War on Drugs, um, you know, they're getting all these amazing reviews and the critics love them. Um, for me, they're decent. They're a good band. They're a one-trick pony that does that one trick really, really good. And I enjoy their tunes. Um, so, uh, this, was, this was good. I enjoyed it. It's uh, very replayable. And uh, these guys price their records very affordably. I think even on double LP, triple LP stuff, it still averages to about 15 bucks a record, which nowadays you can't expect much better than that. You can bitch and moan all you want, but the prices are the prices. Um, I'm a big Blitz and Trapper fan. I didn't know this was coming out. I saw it. I picked it up instantly. This is... Um, Blitz Trap of Volume 1, unreleased recordings. Walking Bullets at Breakneck Speed, recorded 2006-2007. Uh, these are unreleased, and they're probably unreleased for a reason. This did not blow me away. There's no flow to the album. I don't think these were recorded to be on an album. Um, so it's meh. It's a meh. Meh Blitz and Trapper album. And I usually really dig Blitz and Trapper. I would stay away from that one. If Now Again's going to release it, I'm going to buy it. This is Now Again's uh, Function Underground. 
This is uh, the black and brown American rock sound, 1972 to 1977. There's the label. It comes with the booklet that now again loves to provide with tons of info on the bands. I didn't look at the bands per se. I mean, Purple Snow, Jimmy Macon, we the people, Stone Cold White. I mean, I don't know these bands, but this stuff is great, man. If you like psych, if you like rock, um, and they did a great job on this. The one thing I will say is this is about as scuffed and as poorly handled a new release as I've seen in a long time. I mean, it doesn't affect playback and it sounds fine, but there's fingerprints on it. It's a sealed fucking record. Get your shit together. I thought I'd see a United on the Dead Wax. I didn't. I have no idea where this was pressed. But whoever pressed it, get your quality control together. Otherwise, phenomenal album. And it sounds good, and the music's juicy. Uh, I got this. This was a special release. I think it was limited. Uh, this is a special, um, I believe it's a 40-inch record of the soundtrack for Captain America. It's a, it's a VG plus because a lightsaber has hit it a lot and if you throw it it'll come back to you and you can also use it as a uh, sled in the snow. Ridiculous record store day releases. Uh, Jason Isbell and the 400 unit uh, welcome to 1970, live from Welcome to 1979. Welcome to 1979 is a recording studio, uh, where they specialize in, uh, direct to lacquer. Uh, sounds great, all analog, no multiple takes. They go in, they play live, they put it on wax, and it goes into my ear balls. And really good. I mean, all this stuff, um, there's six songs on it. And they're all covers with the exception of the last song, which is Isbell's Never Gonna Change. But they do um, The Stones, Can't You Hear Me Knocking, which is good. They do Sway, which who doesn't like Sway? They do Springsteen's Atlantic City, John Prine's Storm Windows, uh, and Heart on the String. Really good and affordable. Uh, and Jason Isbell is really good. Love them in Drive-By Truckers, like his solo stuff, although I don't have any on it on vinyl. It's too expensive. I'll wait a couple of years. Get it later. Really good. Yeah, I got the Bowie. Cracked Actor. This was $42, $43 for three LPs live set. I know people are bitching about the price, but what are you going to expect? A three LP set. I mean, unless your store charged way more. Um, I This is the only one I have not spun yet. Um... But I'm sure I love it because Bowie is Bowie. I did not get the promo, bow promo. The packaging's amazing. Um, but again, it's one LP, six songs that I'd love to hear the, the, the versions of. Um, but for $50, I think it was, in most places, I, I got to draw the line somewhere. If you got it, awesome. Good for you. I wish I could have gotten it. Um, but... I have to put it back. I got to draw a line somewhere. Um, got Where the Pyramid Meets the Eye. That's a tribute to Rocky Erickson. Gatefold. This was only like 22 bucks. But it's got ZZ Top. A bunch of people. Bong Water, Primal Scream, Julian Cope, Southern Pacific, REM, Butthole Surfers. You know, uh, T-Bone Burnett. Mighty Lemon Drops doing Rocky Erickson songs. Are they as good as the originals? Of course they're not. If they were as good as the originals, there would never be a tribute album. Does that make sense? Uh, really good. I really enjoyed this. Now, if you're a huge Rocky Erickson 13th Floor Elevator fan, is it going to be as hard rocking as you're used to? No, it is not. These are people covering and doing tributes to the band. Really cool though, and it sounds phenomenal. It's on uh, Sire. Good stuff, very happy with this. I pondered putting it back, but I was like, ah, fuck it. It's something that you're not familiar with. Um, 
got the Grateful Dead, July 29th, 1966. Um, I passed on last year's Grateful Dead. I may have passed on the year before's Grateful Dead. I can't remember which one's which, but I got it with my Grateful Dead thing. I got to stop it somewhere. Um, and I got to change the record. All right, where were we? Grateful Dead, my Grateful Dead completist tendencies. I, I, I've toned them down. If I see a Grateful Dead live show and it's got a disc or two sides worth of space and cryptical envelopment and drums and whatever, I'm not going to get it. Um, it's just a waste of wax. The, that stuff, there's plenty of it. Um, and there's only so much... Grateful Dead improvisation you can take, I guess. But this uh, had none of those. It's two discs. It was $30, $32 maybe. Um, so this is the Dead's first show in Canada, but it is also their first legitimate show outside of California, 1966. Their first album hadn't even come out yet. So this was a really interesting time for the dead that I'm not that familiar with. This is fucking great. Um, first of all, there's a couple of songs on here that they never played again. Standing on the Corner, which is okay. Um, and You Don't Have to Ask, which is as psyche as you can get, and it rocks, and it's awesome. Then the other stuff is good, grateful dad that you're used to, you know. Their cover, Big Boss Man, which is always great. Uh... Cream Puff War, Viola Lee Blues, Baby On Down the Line, Good Morning Little School War, Cold Rain and Snow. I mean, they do their covers, they do their stuff. Um, it's great. It, it intros them. This was at some sort of festival. Um, and nobody knew them. They didn't have an album out. They hadn't played outside of California. And when they introduced the Grateful Dead, silence on the on this recording. It's It's hilarious. But for them to have a reel-to-reel -reel going on their first show outside of California, good for them, man. And this is great. It sounds awesome. Uh, for a live recording from 1966 on a reel-to-reel -reel at, at a huge concert, um, really good. Really, really good. Very happy with this. And I was pleasantly surprised because all of these go for like $50 on Record Store Day. And I was like, I'm not spending $50 or more on Grateful Dead again. But... For 32, I was like, yeah, I'll get it. And I'm very pleased with it. Um, yeah, if you're a Grateful Dead fan. Uh, and way early period, way more psych than, you know, the normal jam band stuff. So that may appeal to other people as well. And then lastly was one of the reissues that I had zero interest in. But the album's great. I wish I had a clean copy. So I bought the reissue. And I also bought it because Shady, it's Nielsen Schmilson. Everyone knows this album. If you don't get to know it, the guy's an amazing songwriter. Uh, uh, influence on Lennon, etc. Not Lennon and Stalin, John Lennon. Um, really good. Um, enjoyed the hell out of it. Now, it's advertised as being pressed on split yellow and white. No, it actually comes through on the video better than it comes out in real life. When I first opened this, I'm like, this is just white. The yellow is very faint. Um, in any case, forget the colors. I just want to point that out. But the reason I bought it is because I have an original Nilsson Schmilson. And it's beat to shit. So I wanted to replace it. It also comes with a poster and download code, which are unimportant. Shady Dog does some cool stuff, man. If you go... They'll put gift certificates into random used records. So, you know, if you're only going there for the record store day stuff and leave, great. If you go there and you actually search their new arrivals, um, you may find some goodies. This one had a stick. They also do these things for some of the record store days. This one had a sticker on it that said, if you buy this for, I think it was 19 bucks. You get $20 off any used merchandise. So I was like, done. I wasn't planning on getting it, but I'll spend $19, $20 and also get $20 off used merchandise. And that $20 on the used merchandise turned into 
Wizard's Brew. This is, uh, I mean, it is not what it seems, all right? Roy Wood's Wizard's Brew is it's more blues-based prog and rock than whatever that intimates. Um, I'd love to, to say who showed this on the VC over a year ago, and I've never found a clean copy until now, but I can't remember. Um, so that was part of the used stack, and then I also got... I, don't, I, I looked through old seven inches that I never do over there, and I found this really, really awesome, clean copy, original on CBS of The Clash, White Riot. Uh, this is great, and it's essentially free, or whatever it cost me for the Schmelson. So... Had a good record store day. Enjoyed it thoroughly. If you don't want to hear my th general thoughts about record say you can t tune out now. Um, so Shady Dog's a small shop. Opened at 9.30. Got there at 9. 8th or 9th, 10th in line. Then you go in and there's, you know, eight boxes of stuff on top of their normal used stuff. You flip through it. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a jostling and there were some people that were overly aggressive. But that's whatever that's something that I've learned to deal with. I won't deal with it ad nauseum. This wasn't that bad. Um, I also won't wait in line for over an hour. I saw videos where people went to Amoeba Records at 9 p.m. the night before and camped out all night. This one woman camped out at 9.30 p.m. and all she wanted was Santana's Woodstock reissue. Get online. You can get it now. And don't tell me it's an experience because you guys sit there in line and Amoeba gives you a list of everything they have. You put X's next to what they have. They take it in. And then when you walk in the door, your stuff's already packaged. You pay and you leave. There's no flipping through bins. The guy said that he was in. I mean, he stayed there all night, but he gave them the list. He went in. He got his stuff. He was out before the store even opened officially. So what's the point? Go meet some people. Talk to the record store owners. Look through their new arrivals. Buy some new stuff. The RSD stuff is great, but I guarantee you there's better you stuff. Um, so I'm not going to wait. Um, and these guys don't price gouge either, which I think is the reason they don't make a ton of money. And George Wildhart put up a video talking about what he thinks about Record Store Day, and I'll give you a hint. It's not positive. So, I had a blast at Shady Dog. I really enjoyed everything I got. It all was affordable. Um, at 15 bucks average per record, I don't think that's highway robbery. I think it's fine. And they didn't order a lot of nonsense either. But, record store day is what you make of it. Don't go to stores like that, that price gouge. Go to your local store that you know the owner and you're friendly with the owner. Go at any time of day. They know you're there to shoot the shit and buy some good records. Um, support the stores that support you and make you feel good about the hobby. And I, I got a bunch of other you stuff too. I'll do a video about that later. Peace.